So I hadn't done a Zen server video in a little while. Yes, I'm still using it. Yes, it still works wonderful. And yes, they've progressed a lot on the project. And I'm specifically talking the XCPNG server. So that's a different than the Citrix version of Zen. Citrix decided to you know, make some license changes that were less than pleasing to the community. And these guys said, why not make it all open source? And we moved everything over to XCPNG. Don't worry if you installed based on Citrix, you can install this right over the top and bring all your VMs and settings along with it. Uh, and that's what we did. We did an in-place upgrade. Um, and I really do consider going fully open source with this an upgrade, which is great. And they finally have recompiled and got this pretty much Uncitrixed, I might want to call it, which is the XCPNG Center if you want to use this. This is the uh, Windows in version of the management tool. This is different than Zen Orchestra. Now, is there an exact difference between them? They are two different things. This is XCPNG Center, which runs in Windows. Uh, doesn't seem to work real good in Wine. I know there's been some work to try to make it work that way, but I hardly ever use it because I use the Zen Center, Zen Orchestra software, which I actually like a lot better. Now, you can do pretty much all the same things in both of them, but Zen Orchestra does go another step and has, for example, a really nice backup uh, system and some other tools to orchestrate how Zen Center, how Zen Server works. And I'm really happy with that. Now, you can, like I said, use this for pretty much all the other features, importing, exporting VMs, shutdown, reboots, and lots of other things, managing storage pools. It does have these cool, pretty graphs, so if you need to see CPU usage on something, it's a little different than how Zen Center works. And of course, this is easy, just if you're in Windows, install it, and it works, versus if you can get the community edition of Zen Orchestra for free, but you have to pay if you want all the advanced features, or you can compile it yourself, and they have instructions on how to do that which means it doesn't automatically update and it doesn't easily configure. It's not like just a drop-in plug-in. There's some effort that has to be put in on your part to make it work. Or you can buy the paid version, which comes with full support and everything else. And their support is really good. The, the admins for this are very responsive. But let's get into some of the details and some of the changes. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and pop over to Zen Orchestra. Now, I'll start here and leave you first with this GitHub link. Uh, this GitHub link is a Zen Orchestra installer updater, and I did this based on Debian. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. You can grab, clone this script in GitHub, and it will build out or even use a Docker build for uh, Zen Orchestra and setting it up. This is for the community edition, and I have been using this to update it. Now, there's some details of some of the prereqs and different things you have to have loaded in order to get this working. So it's not a turnkey system. It does take a little bit of Linux knowledge on your part to get it going. Or as I said, you can use the free version of that, but you will not get every feature if you use the free version. So I'm using the community edition right here. And like I said, if you're a home user, community edition is fine. If you want this in business, they have paid support packages. And like I said, their support's really good. Um, their full version is really nice, adds a lot to it. But this is pretty much looks the same. Uh, they've done lots of little under the hood enhancements. So we're gonna talk about them real quick. And so this is the Zen Orchestra 527. They just released this in September. And there's a lot of little things like the uh, understanding which virtualization modes are shown, uh, and it displays it right there. So let me to pull up like anything. It tells you, all right, this is hardware virtualization. We'll pair virtualization drivers. And I'll leave links to all this because they have a lot of details for those who want to dig into it. But for brevity, we're just going to cover how this basically works. They've also added a neat feature so you can choose the emulation of the network card. So you are actually able to go in here instead of uh, the real tech, you can do an Intel E100. And this is how it emulates the network interface for the virtual machine. And that may be very helpful to some. Um, the real Realtek 8819 is a really popular, well-supported network card, but you may want some virtual machines to run the Intel E100, and it's just an emulation system. I recommend actually loading the Zen tools once you have the VM set up, but of course that's not always possible if you're running VMs with older uh, pieces of software, and sometimes that's one of the use cases for running virtual machines is you have some old archaic piece of software that you kind of want to set up in its own VM uh, because you have some use case for it. And we have clients in that situation running out-of-date software because it runs specialized equipment. So they updated the way the task views work. They can do last seen tasks and let you search through them, which is kind of cool. Uh, restore whole folder. So no need to individually files manually like 
before, one click and you get the whole folder content restored. I've never really played with this. This is a full version feature, be able to uh, break down a VM and restore files within it. It's kind of neat that that's an option though. So you can take your VM backups, but you only wanted a file, but you know it's in the backup and you weren't running some other type of backup that would be easier than that to do. But yeah, you could do this. That's kind of cool. Uh, restart all failed VMs in a job. That's kind of cool, too, because um, when you have a job management set up, and this is one of the reasons I like this, you can go a step further with an orchestra and set up uh, jobs, scheduling, and actually orchestrate, as they kind of the name implies, situations to happen. So they've really upped this and added a lot more features and understanding how this works, including like the being able just to restore a job. So that's enough for the Zen Orchestra updates. And this is the XCPNG 7.5 update. And got ahead of myself there, but this is the ZFS support that was added. It's in kind of beta, but it gives you something to play with. And I know someone's going to comment, why aren't you using Proxmox? Because I don't think I've ever done a virtualization video at all that someone says I should be using Proxmox. And I know Proxmox does have ZFS support and they're working on it here in XCPNG, which is pretty cool. So they have the instructions here how to enable it. So that's among the features of 7.5 that's kind of interesting. Now, what I also think is really cool is that they are doing upstream pushes uh, to Zen server. So they're actually talking about exclusive bug fixes, not that they want them to be exclusive. This is open source. Citrix can take these, and I believe they're all pushing them back to the Zen project, so there's nothing stopping Citrix from doing these as well. And this is one of the things I really like about the XCPNG project is, you know, they're not just solving problems and added features, they're also quashing bugs and pushing it upstream. So it's not like they're trying to cut anyone out of the this, you know what I mean? This is the beauty of open source software, so you can see what's going on there. Uh, supported pool increase size is 64, so you can now have 64 hosts per pool, and that's kind of neat, so they're expanding even more features than beyond. Of course, as hardware gets better, and sometimes you just have to run a lot of things in VMs, uh, you can run more of them, which is really cool. Um, and of course, they do have, if you didn't know, they do have their XCPNG Pro support. Uh, and this is really cool. This is kind of their business model is they have XCPNG.org and .com. And they're not selling you two different versions. They're only selling you a support option. And like I said, from a business standpoint, this is really nice because, hey, here's all the open source software. We keep developing a project, but you have special needs or special help you need for this server. They have pricing and everything like that. So uh, $600 per host per year for a commercial commercial support, not bad at all, and they have different agreements here. So I just want to talk about that and mention that is an option. So if you're thinking about using this in your enterprise environment, you absolutely can and have the support for it. Now, in the latest, in September release, they had they had an incremental update. It's still 7.5, but they added something that's pretty cool that wasn't built in before. So I have mine systems built on top of hardware RAID arrays on my Dell servers, but if you want to add software RAID arrays for the install, they allow you to build mirrors with it. So they now have integrated that into the installer uh, so you can build a mirror. So it does not take a lot to install Zen Server because it generally runs in a smaller piece and then you have your storage array. This is separate from your storage array. This is your essentially boot array and it, they allow you to create now software RAID. Like I said, I'm running hardware RAID on mine, so it's kind of a non-issue, but if you wanted to take a few small drives, because you don't need a lot for the boot of this, like a small pair of SSDs, you could then build this and to a RAID array using your standard Linux MDADM RAID tool. So pretty slick, and it's part of the built-in installer now, so there's nothing difficult about it. I got this was kind of novel. They're offering a net install ISO. Um, what this will do is allow you to pull a smaller ISO boot and grab the rest and pull it down. Novel feature. Um, it's not. I'm not too much of a. <laughs> I don't. I guess it's neat. I don't have a good use case for it. I just download the full version, install it. I've got plenty of thumb drives to install it from that are big enough to handle the full size <laughs> load. But I guess it's kind of cool because some of the net installs are nice because then you can keep the net install and it generally will always pull the latest version. Um, but I generally like to have it right there because, well, just my habits of the way I do things. Now they do have an available soon here and you can read through and I'll leave links to this, of course, to the uh, status of XCPNG 7.6. They have a beta and they have some of the more changes they're going to be making inside of Zen server. Apparently there's a few things broke, but hey, it's beta and I'm, you know, I'm not ready to run this uh, for my system, but it's definitely watching the progress of the project. And, you know, here it is. 
this was released in September. This is October 1st, and we still see updates from the uh, Oliver Lambert, the primary admin for this. Um, they're very active, and this is something I really like, is you see a lot of activity in the entire development process. Uh, they're very responsive um, in quashing bugs and in developing this product. So it keeps me using it. I, like I know, I know there's someone screaming, I love Proxmox, and I don't think there's anything wrong with Proxmox. I have a friend who really enjoys using it. Uh, he's using it for some container stuff that it works really well for. I don't really have any containers, and it's not a use case I really have. I just like Zen Server, um, but I don't hate Proxmox. I don't understand. People think if I like one product, I must dislike the other. I started on this one. All my stuff's built in it. It's been working fine, and we have several servers that I migrate back and forth uh, when we're moving things around for updates, and it's always worked. So I've just continued on with Zen Server. We have clients using it in production, and we we have been just loving it because it works really, really well. So I don't have big use cases switch. But those are the few updates from Zen uh, Server. Still using it, still loving it. Um, no real issues. The updates went smooth. I didn't do them as soon as they came out because, well, I was busy doing lots of client projects and they weren't any something so major glaring security hole that I had to do it right away. So yeah, I got lazy and waited a little bit. But we updated clients first. Sometimes, you know, it's just a matter of scheduling and timing and getting it all done. But uh, we're all up to date on the latest version and I figured I'd give you an update on this. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback. Or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.